Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yes! Oh! <laughs> We're back. This is the Amazing Race After Show here at AfterBuzz TV for season 27, episode one, but not really episode one because we're doing a pre-show cast assessment before the premiere tonight on CBS. I'm your host, James Wallington. You can follow me on Twitter at James Wallington. And we have a surprise new host with us across the table, which I'm really excited to introduce you to. But you all know the beautiful... Hello everyone, I'm so excited to be back. I'm Jessica Carroll, and we have some exciting news. Joining us this whole season will be... Hi everybody, it's Marie. Um, I'm so excited to be part of the yeah. panel. I'm a little nervous, everyone's mad that Justin's gone. Oh. But I'm excited to be here. No, yeah, Justin has a big boy job. He's working <laughs> full time now. He's a really busy guy. So Justin, we miss you already. He'll be calling in every now and then to give his feedback on the season, but... Yeah, for now, we still have we two blondes so on the panel. <laughs> Another girl, are you kidding? This is I awesome. Know. And a former contestant, yes. so she can give us all the inside scoop. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of a contestant in the studio, let's talk about the new batch of teams for season 27. Yes. We'll start off right off the gate with Jasmine and Danielle, who are best friends and roommates. Hashtag the track stars. They're also, in my mind, team purple. But what do you guys think of Jasmine and Danielle so far from just what you've seen? These girls are going to bring it. For sure, I think they have great energy. Definitely, what they're my first pick, like they're my favorite. Yeah. Because you know I'm gonna like the athletes. Um, yeah. I feel like these girls are hardcore, they're athletes, they're gonna kick butt. And they're also smart. They mentioned that they're not only, you know, physically and athletic, but they're also smart. They got the brains too. Yeah, they received their master's de degree from US, uh, UC Riverside. They've known each other for six years, and they said that they're going to bring the athleticism to this season because they are hardcore athletes. But let's be real. We've seen in previous seasons that sometimes the people who go right off the gate as like strong athletes mm -hmm. in the competition don't really do well. Just because you're athletic doesn't mean you're going to win the Amazing Race. There's so many other factors that come into play. Marie, I'm sure you know that. Right. That's true. But so. I think, like you said, they're smart. Like yes. These are smart girls. They're not just athletic. Um, and they know each other. They have a history. They're going to know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So I think they're going to go far. Yeah. I like them. I think they're great and they have wonderful personalities. So yes. they'll definitely be entertaining. And they, they also mentioned that um, Josh and Tanner are great eye candy. Yes. And I 100% <laughs> agree. I second that. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> And they also mentioned that the Jersey girls, they called them the cheerleaders, mm -hmm. they might want to team up with them. Absolutely. So the two girl teams are maybe wanting to form an alliance, which is kind of cool. Yeah. They're, one of their strategies that they said was that they're okay with flirting with the male teams. And right off the bat, we have Team Texas, who will transition into now Tanner and Josh, their oh. best friends. Hashtag Team Texas. Just like Jasmine and Danielle said, they are eye candy for Definitely. us this season. So thank you for being on season 27. <laughs> what do you ladies think of Tanner and Josh? You love them. You know you love I them. I do. <laughs> I do. I really like these boys. Yep. But they, they're they hot, for, first of all. And they... Hopefully their ego doesn't get in the way. That's the one thing That's I'm, what worried I'm worried about. about with them. But yeah. you know what's funny? I Maybe it was just me, but from when I was watching their little clip on the YouTube for Amazing Race, I didn't really get an ego vibe from them at all because you know they did talk about how their faith is the most important thing to them. They do seem like well-rounded Texas gentlemen. So hopefully they won't be ego because we've seen you know in past right. season, the alpha male teams usually do have ego and that's what drives them and also is ultimately what their downfall is. So... I hope that's not the case with them. Yeah, and they did say that they don't want other teams to hate them. They right. want people to like them, but then they did say when it does come down right. to winning, and so they will do whatever they need to do to get to the map first. Mm -hmm. But I do like that, just like you said, I do like that they're not, they don't want to be the bad guy. Right, right. they're likable teams. Right. So like they have the whole alpha male thing going, they're good looking, Everybody, everyone's like, oh look at this guy, guy team, they're gonna go far. But like they're not jerks about it. Yeah. So I feel like because they're likable, 
um, the other teams are, you know, they're going to be able to form an alliance with like whoever they want. Right. And I think they're they're going to go far too. Agreed. Yeah. The one thing that I thought was interesting about their relationship is that they weren't always close in high school, but the moment they got into college, it was a different story. So I wonder if maybe like past issues that they had in high school may surface on the race. Yeah. You never know under that pressure. But that's just one thing that stuck out about the relationship I thought was really interesting. Yeah. They weren't sure. always best friends. They like didn't get along, right? Yeah. They say they like weren't friends at all in high school. Yeah. So. And now they're here they are an amazing race. <laughs> what I loved though is that they said that their biggest competition were yes. the cheerleaders, but they also said that their strategy is to flirt with the other girl teams to get them onto their side, which is interesting because then you said that your biggest threat is the cheerleaders right off the bat so and they did say that they have similar personalities so sometimes they butt heads so hopefully they also can communicate and get past you know they they might both want to do the same challenge and so hopefully they can figure out a strategy to work together right I think they're both going to be good at the same things, and they're both going to be bad at the same things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where they're going to run into a problem. Yeah, and they also, they did say that they, you know, they, they know that other teams might look at them as competition, mm -hmm. but they, they still, you know, are still the likable team. Right. They're not letting that get to their head either. Well, speaking of their biggest competition, hashtag the cheerleaders, let's just talk about <laughs> Tiffany and Krista, the former NFL cheerleaders for the New York Jets. Um, I love them. They're easily one of my favorites already, not only because they're wearing lime green, but I <laughs> love course. I <laughs> love the fun all-female teams. That's why you wore green today, right? All right, yeah, you know. <laughs> but I always root for the all-female team, so this is one that I think are like a strong contender to do well this season. Yeah, and they... You know, unlike the Team Texas, they have different personalities. One's more laid back and mm -hmm. one's like the firecracker. So I think that having two different personalities will help balance each other. But just like you said, they're very likable and they said it themselves. Don't judge the book by its cover. They'll get down, they'll get dirty, but they'll also look good doing it. Yeah, I like them. They were one of my favorites. I mean, the Jets are my team. So <laughs> these girls are from the East Coast. Like, how could I not like them? Um, so, and I think, like you said, they they balance each other. Like, mm -hmm. what one is, you know, has as a weakness might be a strength of the other one. And um, they're kind of the female equivalent of the Texas team. But I think because they're different from each other, and you know, they know how to work together under stress and whatnot, um, that's going to be to their advantage. Right. And they did talk about how being NF and being NFL cheerleaders has been great prep for the Amazing Race because they go through a really intense training camp from spring all the way to the fall that they think has prepared them physically and mentally for the competition. And I also love how they said that they're gonna, you know, people think that they just stand there and look pretty, but mm -hmm. they want the teams to underestimate them due to how they make themselves up with all their hair and makeup. So that could be a really interesting strategy. Yeah, I like it. I think that'll work. I think everybody, you know, you don't expect the cheerleaders to be good at anything. Right. I think these girls are gonna be great. They're gonna play into that stereotype as strategy. Oh, for so sure. Perfect. <laughs> great, yes. Let's talk about a dating couple, Kelsey and Joey. Hashtag the reporters. Not only are they co-workers, but they're a dating couple from Santa Barbara, California. They're cute. They're oh. cute. That's the only thing that really comes to my mind. Is they're, they're cute. You know, this is the team that reminds me of the dentists from a few seasons ago. Hmm. Like, they're just kind of... Yeah. I don't know. I like, know. We didn't really get to know much about them. Except for, you know, what they do and that they're dating now. We didn't get to see much of their personality, so I'm excited to see more. But the one thing I did notice is that they talked a lot about the money. And, you know, they said that, yes, we're on TV, but we don't make a lot of money. So... And they can't afford an apartment to right. live together. And... Right. I feel like that was exaggerated, though. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but it is true. I mean, working in a newsroom, you have deadlines. You have to, you know, find a story, get write it, produce it. So they're good at being always on the go. That's true. My my only argument to that statement when they were like, yeah, we work under a deadline, so the stress factor is something we're comfortable with. I can't imagine like being in like a desk in an office environment, like running back and forth from cubicle, cubicle to cubicle to make deadlines is anything equivalent no, to the, the Amazing Race. It's not the I don't same. even think those even compare. So it's cute that they think that might be something similar, but I think they're in for a treat. Yeah. Definitely in for a treat. They'll be fun to watch, definitely. Let's talk about another another cute couple on this season. They're an engaged couple. Hashtag the green team. Justin and Diana. I'm a little bummed about their hashtag. I feel like they got gypped. Yeah. What? The green <laughs> yeah, team? I don't know. I think they should have been like Team Philly or something because they're both from Philadelphia. So 
Or like fake proposal. Or oh, they're like yeah. the fanatics. They're the super fanatics, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that the should have been their hashtag. Fans. The super yeah, fans. Yeah, the super fans. Did you guys actually watch their viral proposal no, video? I watched like a minute of it and then I was like, I get the gist. <sighs> Was yeah. it cute? It was, I mean, I'm a sucker for that. I work in the wedding industry. So when I watched it, I was like, oh my God. And I immediately pulled my boyfriend aside. I'm like, look at this engagement. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I loved their viral proposal video because like we said earlier that they are super fans of the race. And the fact that Justin went above and beyond to make this fake online proposal, yeah. like amazing race edition for Diana. And she thought she was going to be on this amazing race online thing. And then all of a sudden Justin shows up and then next thing they know they're on a plane and being, she's so being proposed cute. to under the Northern lights. Right. It's insane. I think it's adorable. And I also love the fact that he, he this is going to be a team where we see he is going to motivate her and motivate her and motivate her. They're going to really get to motivate each other because Diana said that she, you know, lacks a little bit in the confidence area, right. but Justin's there to bring her back up. And so we're definitely going to see that. And also the fact that he, would just do anything to see her happy and make all of her dreams come true. Hello. Like, that's so <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's cute, but I don't think they're going to do well. I, know, I feel like he's the whole team. Yeah. You know, he she did talk barely a lot. talked yeah. in the interview and she openly said, you know, like, I'm not that great at everything and he's going to be the, the strong one and whatnot. And I kind of feel like it's hard to run the race when it's like just more one-sided mm -hmm. um and i don't know if that's i i feel like that'll get to them like he's gonna get frustrated with her quick yeah unless she's just holding back little do we know i don't know I watch her be like <laughs> she's the true fire yeah. Yeah. yeah justin was saying that he's more prepared than anyone else on this race and the only way that they're going to get eliminated is dumb luck that no one has control over and my only criticism about them being super fans and you can tell like their passion just like comes out of their pores for right. the show is that we see on other reality shows like Survivor and Big Brother usually the super fans play way too hard way too fast and yeah. they crash and burn and they have some little miss up like and they're gone they're I think done knowing too much is a disadvantage like sure. I remember on our season people that had watched every single one knew everything they made decisions based on what happened previously. things that have happened previously or you know in this leg on this season this was going to happen so we should do this versus Tim and I went on and we had basically never seen the show and you just make clear decisions based on and what's in, in the front top of three. you right <laughs> right so I mean I guess it helps to kind of know you know be like an expert on the show but I think it could also hurt you I yeah agree. you got to go with that gut instinct well, but Diana did say, I know, Diana did say that they want to be the team that doesn't look like they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but secretly they do. Well, they they want to float that. under the radar. They want to look <laughs> average. Average under the radar, yes. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe she's just holding back for her little strategy there. I, w I also am hoping that, you know, since the interview did show that, like, the will will get eliminated from dumb luck. I hope that's not like foreshadowing. You <gasps> totally know? is. You know it is. <laughs> oh, you know it is. They're gonna, they're gonna make, make one mistake that's like huge for amazing racers, and they're gonna be like, "We should have known from being fans that that's what's gonna happen." So, yeah, who knows? Let's talk about some characters this season. One in particular being the dancers. Hashtag the dancers. Ernest and Jen. They're brothers. They dance. What you, do you guys think of the dancers? You can't not love them I and agree. their story. I mean, I was like, you guys deserve to win just because of their story. So they stole my heart. I mean, the fact that they work four jobs, he lives out of his car. They, I mean, hopefully, you know, going through those challenging times, hopefully they do know how to, you know, compete. But I also think that because they haven't necessarily traveled a lot and they're not necessarily very worldly, hopefully that doesn't bite them in the butt. Sure. I think they're gonna be entertaining. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they look like the most fun team. Um, so I'm excited to watch them. But like you said, I think it's just going to be something like traveling common sense, like some yeah. slip up that kind of is going to catch them. Mm -hmm. So, But it'll be fun to watch. They're definitely going to be funny. But they might know like little shortcuts on how to, you know, manipulate things that... That's true. So who knows? We'll have to find out. The one thing that I think will hurt them, because, you know, The Amazing Race is a travel reality competition show, yeah. is Ernest says he doesn't like being on planes. And yeah. How, like, totally. If you had a percentage of, like, the amount of times you spend on planes, what would it be? Literally, you spend, like, 27 hours. <laughs> so, like, every leg is, like, over two days. <laughs> and three quarters of it is traveling. So, you know, you take one flight somewhere, it's six hours. And then there's a layover in the airport for anywhere from three hours to 12 hours sleeping there. And then you get on another plane. Maybe it's 10 hours. Then you get off and you race for six hours. Yeah. So 
I mean, I didn't even realize how much flying there was involved. But for somebody who says like, oh, I don't like flying, you know, I don't want to be on a plane for three hours. Like mm-hmm. this guy's in for a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah. And like, you're not, you know, you're in coach, you're in the back of the plane, you're next to your teammate. Not comfortable. And it's not comfortable. So I, he's going to hate that. Yeah. I think that'll be their only downfall. Because if he doesn't like flying and he's going to be uncomfortable for all those hours traveling, it's going to start to catch up to him and then they're going to crush and burn. So I would like for them to surprise us, but right now they're not a top contender for me to do well long-term right, on right. the show. Another team that has a shtick, if you will, this season <laughs> is hashtag team TMZ. Kelly and Siobhan, they're co-workers and friends, and I'm just going to be blunt <laughs> like them. I'm not a big fan. No. no not, not a big fan all. of them at no. all. Sorry, we're on, I know you guys are unfiltered. We're unfiltered up here. And <laughs> <laughs> I actually, out of everyone... I think they might be the first to go. I, oh, absolutely. I know, oh, absolutely. you guys yeah. agree. Oh, okay. I'm like, I. there's just something about them. Like, they're not going to do well. If they're going to, you know, rely on being blunt and working in the entertainment news. Like, like what does that do for what traveling? What skills like, do you what? really bring yeah, to the right. Amazing Race? Because at all, like, as of now, just from the interviews I've seen, you haven't really <laughs> presented a good case as to right. why you're going to do well. And, and once again, they, mu- they mentioned the money, the million dollars. And sometimes I think that if a team is just really focused on getting the money and not, you know, being part of the race and being a team member, then... No. Well, because they hardly have a pre-existing relationship. Right. They work together probably a couple hours a week, which is what? Like sitting next to each other, throwing shade? Like that's not a relationship. Right. Yeah, throwing much. shade for a living. Right. Like, <laughs> I was just like, to help you. Great. You can be mean to people in the airport. Like yeah. you're not going to win the race. I think you're not yeah. going to get what exactly. you want. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, anyone can throw shade at Kylie Jenner. It's pretty yeah. easy. So. so I think that's going to backfire. I, they're, I would like bet everything that they're the first team to go I home. agree. And they yeah. also said that they're physically not the front runners. And they said something about like, just because that's the case doesn't mean we can't win. You've seen that in past seasons but I'm like no you just are physically not the front runners and you're just not gonna do well <laughs> poor girls like I you know I can imagine them taking time off from TMZ to have to do this and I'm sure there's a lot of contracts involved but mm-hmm. gosh I just I don't see them lasting the first episode no, no. <laughs> but good luck girls yeah have fun and sequester well switching <laughs> gears with a team that I am already in love with but also a little jealous of is T- Denise and James Earl yes. the mother and son team Alabama the other reason why I'm jealous is because my mom and I have auditioned for The Amazing Race and I've never gotten it but I'm so excited for this team because they bring something very unique that's a little bit different from Margie and Luke they he's gay in the video and she's, he's like he's gay I'm straight yeah. <laughs> I'm just like okay this is I'm already in love with the mom she's a star what do you guys think of Denise and James okay Earl? so when I first heard the story I wanted to like shake the mom right because of her response when her son came out to her you're going to hell you're going to hell I was like Oh my god! But then after watching the rest of their interview and their their you know chemistry now they're super cute. They I just think that they they're gonna have great like one liners, yes. great moments. So they'll be yeah fun they're to gonna me. be cute and they're gonna be funny. Um, but like you said, like similar to Margie and Luke, like they are Margie and Luke. Hmm. Like I feel like they're the same. Maybe the relationship between them is a little bit different. Um, like you said, like when I watched the interview and I saw it, like that came out of the mom's mouth, I was like, oh God, like she didn't say that. They didn't yeah. show it. Oh my God. <laughs> but um, it'll be interesting. I think I think she just did, doesn't know any better, you know? Sure. And she's super cute. And I think maybe we'll kind of like see that develop throughout the season. Yeah. Um, and I think the color pink is perfect for them because oh, it's, it's like perfect. ditzy, flirty, <laughs> like just free spirited so they're gonna go far like by accident yeah, yeah. they're gonna be like that that, but, that team that just slides yeah. in yeah I also think they're gonna do extremely well because she they talked in their interview about how she could literally talk to a bush for yeah. an hour she's that extroverted and being on the amazing race when you're talking to you know people at the airport or people on the street to get directions you know James Earl flat out said that She'll be able to convince anyone to do anything. Like, how yeah. could you not help her? She's right. a mom. You like, know? you love moms automatically. No matter yeah. what, people are going to help her. Even the other teams. Like, yes. I, if she asked me to, like, do something for her, I would be like, oh, uh, yeah. Sure, like, Miss Denise. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be like the bunnies. Like, they're just going to, like, figure out a way yeah. to, like, get the tasks done. Even the other they teams don't... are going to do the tasks yeah. for yeah. them. Yeah, for sure. Keep going. For sure. They're going to make it to the final three, and they're not going to win, but yeah. they'll get there. Yeah. The one thing that I think will hinder them is that there's been some challenging times because Denise says that, or Denise still has a tendency to treat James Earl like a child. Yes. So I can see James Earl maybe having a really short fuse, short temper with that because in like a high stakes race like The Amazing Race, 
that would get old real fast if my mom was treating me like a child. Yeah. I think he's so, going to shut it down. Yeah. He's like half Shut it down, through. Denise. Right. <laughs> and the one thing, though, is that they are very positive. They see everything on sunny side off, as she said. So hopefully their positivity will keep them going even through those tough times. And being pretty in pink, their motto is just keep <laughs> yeah. moving forward. Don't get stuck. If we get angry, be angry, but just keep moving forward. So hopefully that advice It reminds will me of Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. Yes. Just keep swimming. <laughs> just keep moving. <laughs> So now we have Shindy, uh, Shindy, I, I almost said Shack Attack in that name. <laughs> Cindy and Rick, hashtag Shack Attack, which watching the interview, I'm still not entirely sure what Shack Attack means no and idea. why that's their hashtag. And if they have this hashtag, then why do Justin and Diana have the green team? I just, it doesn't make <laughs> sense. So they've been married for one year, three months. Uh, one's an OBGYN, the other's the dentist from San Diego, California. What do you guys think about Cindy and Rick? Yeah, they had Shack Attack on their shirt, and I was so confused. I really want to know the story behind that name. It's like, stop making Shack Attack happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't I don't have much to say about them. In my notes, I wrote annoying married couple. <laughs> yeah, I think that they have, they had no, it was almost like awkward watching them. Like, they just have no chemistry together. And the fact that he said, you know, I've always wanted to be on this show, but I knew they wouldn't take me until I got a hot wife. Yeah, that, yeah, I, that was about, I automatically was like, uh. Yeah, what? I was like, yeah, I don't know. Buddy. I would have smacked him. I'm like, excuse me. Yeah, you're just using me as bait over here. But he is such a huge fan of the show. And again, I'm a big supporter of fans. When your dream comes true, it's obviously just such a huge deal. So hopefully that he will really gain out of this experience what he is hoping for being a fan. Right. So but I just, like some other teams we've talked about, I just don't really see them lasting long. I just don't see it. Yeah, well, we don't really know much about them. Yeah, well, I didn't get any vibe They're from smart. Them. That's about it. <laughs> we'll find out. Hopefully we'll find out what Jack Attack is. Well, even Sydney <laughs> said that Rick has to learn to trust her decisions. Yeah. And that could be a huge... Downfall. I think he's going to tell her what to do the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, I think this is going to be very Travis and Nicole. Right. Yeah. We'll see. I kind of wish that they just would have brought, you know, back Dennis and Isabel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of Cindy and yeah. No offense. So now we have another character type team, Logan and Chris. They're dating and business partners. Hashtag the paparazzi. I already can see villain team a mile away with this, oh, yeah. this duo. There's just something about them that I'm not really crazy about I don't know what it is though <laughs> I don't know what it is either but the fact that he just kept talking about how hot his girlfriend is and that's the pin up paparazzi yeah, the yeah. Pin-up paparazzi no. and I was We're, like is this going to be a strategy of yours because I don't think it's going to work on Amazing Race yeah I didn't get it I mean I I don't like them but I don't like anybody so I mean, <laughs> but but I could see the whole villain thing like obviously every season needs a villain and I think these two are just like not gonna care and they're gonna be you know they're gonna isolate themselves like I don't see them being friends with anyone I don't see anyone wanting to be friends yeah. with them so they're gonna kind of do their own thing um they're not really that likable but who knows they could grow on us I mean right Marsh should be like the stars of the show. I'm like, oh my god, I love the paparazzi. There's so- <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. They're paparazzi. I'll never admit it. If who that happens, likes, I won't admit who it. Who likes paparazzi? They're nosy, they're always in your face, they're like stalkerish. They're that's just paparazzi. But they did say because they are paparazzi, that because they compete against other teams of paparazzi, yeah. they already know the stakes. It's kind of similar to the race in that regard. And also, they don't think that the race will put any stress on them because they already have enough in their relationship. So I'm just like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. It could be a, a hot it's mess be a disaster, express. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely going to be a competitive team, that's for sure. But they are on the higher end of the age spectrum, which is what they observed uh-huh. from being with the other team. So that could either help them or hurt them. But they said it's going to help them because compared to the other teams, it gives them experience, knowledge, uh, and wisdom. That's so funny. No. Great excuse. <laughs> Great excuse. Yeah. No. But they're not even old. I mean, compared to the other teams, like, yes, but it's not like they're old. Right. So. They're not, like, needing, like, some life support. Yeah. I don't, think there's, I don't think they have, like, extra wisdom, and I don't think that that's going to hurt them. I think they, sure. they just happen to be a little older than everybody right last but not least the last team to round up the new 11 teams for this season is alex and adam hashtag the cousins they are they are five feet tall they have a form of dwarfism called pseudo conjaplasia nice one thank you i googled it (laughs) Uh, which uh which they believe makes them unique to the other the other racers this season and i could not agree more yeah they're shorter yeah Yeah. i mean it'll be interesting to see like how their Hopefully, size either helps yeah. or hurts them in the race. But, you know, we have seen from Amazing Race 5 and All-Stars, Sharla, she had a form of achondroplasia, which is the common form of dwarfism in raced 
at four feet tall. So, and she made it to top three in All Star. So, they could surprise us and do really, really well. I mean, unless there's like a basketball challenge, I think that being short is actually an uh, advantage. Well, you're definitely gonna be more comfortable in the plane. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. More leg room. Yeah. I think they're gonna kind of like fly under the radar. No one's gonna be threatened by them. Um, you know, no one's gonna go out of their way to kind of screw them up or anything. I think they're, I mean, I don't know that they're going to final three, but I think we'll see them for a while. Right. And I love that they're ladies men. Oh, totally. <laughs> right? That's so They're cute. like, oh, and we are good with the ladies. I'm so like, oh. cute. They got, they got charm, too. They so. And they both balance each other out like some other teams we've seen. That, but they said that they're, Alex is the athletic one. Yeah. Adam is more of the brain. So they're like brawn and brains of the uh-huh. show. So it'll be interesting to see how their skills come together to and be, be a powerhouse. And they're excited and they're enthusiastic. They said they've been talking about this since they were 16. So you can tell that there's passion behind it as well. Again, super fans. Yay! Yay! Yeah, they're going to be fun. <laughs> they said that their biggest competition right now are the meatheads. Otherwise, hashtag Team Texas. Yes. Because they seem very cocky, kind of like the guys that gave them crap in high school. So they're instantly a target for the cousins right now. But the, what, one thing I love about the cousins is they're not afraid to use the U-turns. And I'm excited yeah. about that. Because some people are like really hesitant to get on the mat. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to use it. I'm like, but bet you already know you're going to use right. it. So just you, use you know it. What I, you know what I hope? Is I hope Team Texas actually helps them out. Yeah. So that their view on those like meatheads yeah. changes. And they say, actually, these guys are really nice. And because, you know, Texas considers themselves as a nice team and they want to be likable, maybe they will reach be out. Be surprised. Yeah. 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 That was the one thing that I didn't like about the cousins that they immediately like Judged. call them the meat. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, yeah. they're not every guy in your high school. You don't know them yet. Like, I think it's not. I think had it been the other way around and there was a judgment made, everyone would be like, oh my God. But, you know, just because these guys are athletic and good looking doesn't automatically mean that, you know, oh, they're the meatheads. Right. right. So. Well, those are our 11 teams yeah. for this season of The Amazing Race. And just like the past few after shows that we've done, we are doing a fantasy league once again. And we already this past week, you know, sized up the, the teams and went to a website called Fantasizer.com. It's Fantasizer with Z-R, no E in between. <laughs> so don't be confused. Fantasizer.com. And we created a fantasy league on there. And we picked our team. So let's talk about our teams a little bit. Let's start off with... Marie, who's Marie, on your team? Our okay. only goal is to make sure James does not win this year. I know. Of course, that is our the first only pick goal, too. right? Like, how did you get the first pick? I didn't. It was Jess. Oh yeah, did I did. You? I did yeah. get the first pick. The yep. website generated and yeah. Well, I Jess. got the last pick, of course, but I was happy because I picked Jasmine and Danielle, who I would have picked anyway because they're the athletes and I love them and they're my number one pick, of course. Um, after that, who did I pick next? You picked. Um, well, you did pick the dancers, oh, but you traded them out. Oh, I picked the dancers, out. but then I traded. That's another story. Um, <laughs> so then, I, who did I? Did I end up picking Cindy and Rick? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, like, like they're annoying. Like I said, I don't like <laughs> them, but I mean, my options were limited, and I think they're. I think they're gonna do okay. Um, and then I had the dancers, but then I convinced James to second guess his his picks. Uh, he got rid of the cousins, and I scooped him up. So dang it, the cousins. <laughs> All right, so I lost them. <laughs> you have a, a well-rounded team. I mean, I wanted the cheerleader so bad. One Sorry. girl team, one boy team, yeah. one co-ed team. Yeah, I have like one of everything. I'm very balanced. My team. I like it. Yo, know, if you had to pick one MVP for your team right now, that's gonna do really well. Who's it gonna be? It's the track girls. Hell yeah. yeah, for sure. Cool. Jess, what about you? What's Who's on your team All and right, why did you so pick them? I got to pick first. And of course, I picked the eye candy. <laughs> team Texas, my boys. So, yep, they're a number one pick. I think they're going to go far. Uh, and then I picked the reporters, Kelsey and Joey. I think that they, they know how to hustle. They'll do well. And then for the last team, just because they're super fans and his story basically won me over, was Diana and Justin. Horrible hash, hashtag, but <laughs> the green team. Who's your MVP? I'm going to assume I already know the answer to that. Team Texas. I mean, All right. For <laughs> sure. I'll be wearing orange. They're orange, right? Yeah. I'll be wearing orange next week. Oh, perfect. Oh, I'm going to wear purple. <laughs> okay, we should Let's all wear just our... dress for our teams all the time. All the time. Okay. I'm going to I like that. Because in the past, we've worn colors of the team that's eliminated. But now we should just represent our fantasy Yeah, I'm just wearing yeah. purple all season. Okay. Oh, gosh. Perfect. On my team, I have Denise and James Earl. That was a no-brainer for me. I'm always a sucker for the mom-son teams. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, my number one pick was Tiffany and Krista. I'm a big fan of the cheerleaders. <laughs> me too. They're, they're, they're good. I actually tried to offer him money for them. Like, How much for the cheerleaders? <laughs> I'm so glad I got to pick second, though, because I immediately, when I saw the New York Jets, I was like,
like, okay, if I don't pick them now, Marie's going to take them. So I got the girls. I'm excited about that. <laughs> and then last but not least, I have the paparazzi. They weren't initially one of my top picks because they were villains. And I was kind of picking on my favorites, not really thinking about the race. The yeah. yeah. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know, they're villains, or in my mind, they're going to be villains. So usually the villains do really well and they surprise us. Right, Marie? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked, I picked the paparazzi and got rid of the cousins and then of course I Marie swooped, them up. swooped them up. So our free agents are Team TMZ and the Dancers which we can trade out for them if we want throughout the season so it'll be interesting to see how our teams may or may not change as the season you know carries on <laughs> but no one's going to trade for Siobhan and Kelly. No. <laughs> no. They're going to be up there and they're, they're going to have a red X through their faces next week. Yes. That's just my prediction. <laughs> Hopefully. James I have to give you props for your little design you did. Oh Great thank you. Great chart. Cute. Oh, well. Super cute. Someone has way too much time on their hands. I thought you know having more visual now would be fun Visuals for our help. show. Yeah. Let's talk about predictions, Zed, before we wrap up our after show today. Because okay. I'm sure we have some opinions. <laughs> Ooh, predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. I love this. Okay, I'm pretty sure all across the board we have the same first Team boot. Going but, home. Marie, let's start with you. Who do you think is going home first? TMZ is going home first. They're going right. to talk a lot of smack. They're going to throw a lot of shade. It's not going to work out. They have no yeah. idea how to it's do anything. Backfire. Yeah. yeah. I second that. Team TMZ for sure. Bye-bye. And I will third that. Team TMZ <laughs> will go bye-bye That's sad. tonight. That's sad. That's sad. But hey, we, at least we're talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we threw shade, so whatever. Right. <laughs> well, that kind of wraps up our pre-show and Who cast do you think's assessment. Win? Oh, already? First. Hmm. Oh, first leg. Yeah, who's going yeah, first first, first, first leg? leg. Oh, that's tough. I want to say Tanner and Josh just because... I don't know. That's not I feel like they're the most, like, I feel like everyone would say that. They're the most, like, obvious team to get first. Uh, yeah, so that's why I don't want to pick them. I'm going to pick them because they're my team. Sure. You just pick them because you think they're hot. Well, like, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that works, too. Being hot doesn't get Roblox done. <laughs> Oh my god! You, you, you just cost. watch. You just watch. They're gonna. They're gonna win. I don't think anyone on my team is gonna get first. Just from the preview, you know, the cheerleaders are crying, which makes me sad already. I'm like, what's going on? Hope they don't get eliminated. Um, who else? I don't know. I'm gonna say the paparazzis get first. Yeah. This like okay. Really? Yeah. Mm. If I'm gonna pick someone from my team, I'm gonna say the paparazzis. Okay. Oh, I'm going with the track stars. Okay. Yeah. They're gonna come out strong. I'm sure there's something like super physical right in the beginning. Um, and they're gonna do it. All right. All the running ones, they're going to do really well. Totally. <laughs> Anything physical, they're yeah. just going to kill it. All right. Well, let us know what you guys think. Tweet us. Where can they tweet you? They can tweet me on Twitter at James Wallington, Instagram at James.Wallington. And I've done a lot of traveling this summer, let me tell you. And I launched a YouTube channel called Where's Wallington? So if you want to join me on my adventures, make sure you go subscribe and check out my travels from the summer. What All about of you, your Jess? videos are amazing. I know. Oh, they they should all check them out. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't watch that. <laughs> uh, you guys can tweet me at DressJessXO. And? and you can find me at Reebsicle, like a popsicle, but a Reebs, across <laughs> all media networks. And make sure you tune into the premiere of The Amazing Race Season 27 tonight on CBS at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're so excited for the premiere tonight. I know you guys are heading to a pre premiere party yes. here in L.A. with some previous uh, uh, racers. We're going to watch it we with other racers. I work, so I'm kind of bummed. But make sure you keep <laughs> following our after show. We know that all of you guys who do watch are loyal fans of ours, so continue to rate, comment, subscribe to After Buzz TV on all social media platforms. And last but not least, make sure to come back on Monday, because that's going to be our normal Monday time slot. Mondays Monday at 4. Mondays at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're watching on the East Coast, that's 7 p.m. for you. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you follow us on all social media platforms and stay tuned for Monday, where we recap the premiere episode of The Amazing Race. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.